click is the main one. There's a whole bunch of other ones too. Um, but the key press, key up, and key down is pretty nice to have. Uh, we'll go over that a little bit some other time. So go ahead over here and we're going to type out, and yes I do have OCD, so it's good to have OCD though. Very, very organized. Okay, so we're going to type out on the screen something that we want to know. Um, we want to be messaged what that number is, so we're going to go ahead and assign, or what I call it, announce what it is. INT number is equal to, and it has to be an integer, which is could be negative or positive, but it has to be um, within the scope. You can find out the scope of those of those numbers yourself. I'm not going to waste more time. Okay, so um, if it's anything really high, you would want to use long. But we're going to use integer. Now I just announced what it is. We're going to want to know what it is to the user. Type out to user message box. Now as I push spacebar here you can see it's prompting you to tell you what you could put. Um, this is this is a whole nother thing in itself if you want to learn how to do functions and, and uh, sub procedures but we'll teach you that a little bit later. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna type in excuse me int number. So now it should just say on the screen negative five. Looks pretty simple. You notice I indent here too. Um, same thing for if and then, which if I was going to do if and then right here, if int number equals negative five, then and if and if you were to do another end if again, you'd want to keep tabbing because the reason for this is, or at least a couple spaces, is you can read it very easily. If you have a bunch of these. If ends right here, blah blah blah. You can see it's going to get a lot more complicated to read it, and you can just see what's in the if then real quick. Um, so right now, of course, we already know it's going to be negative five, and it is negative five here. So it's going to message box. We're going to run this by going up to this button right here, the start button, and we see the button right here. Just go ahead and click that. Oh, negative five. Yeah, obviously. Hit OK. We can close that. Okay, and from here now we're going to talk about some little shortcuts and helpful things you need to probably know. Um, let's say you have a whole bunch of code right here. It just keeps going down. It's thousands of thousands of lines, okay? And we need to find a variable that we know up here at the top. We know what the name is. And we need to figure out how many times it's going through the code or where it is. We may have a bug we have to find. Um, what we can do is go up here to the top and go to Edit and do a find. You can only see this find if you have uh, the code viewable. Um, so for instance if you have this in the way it won't let you select it. Um, so you have to go ahead and make sure that you have your code window up. You go to find and you can find throughout the um, module is the form itself. Procedure is just within uh, like something like this click right here. Only this click. That's a procedure. Um, and then you have project which is the whole project. You can match case and whatever not and do find next. Uh, you find all the all the times that this word is uh, being used or where it's being used at. So you could even do a replace if you had uh, accidentally made this a uh, prefix int but it was a double you could do go ahead and rename it dbl number and replace all for example. Um, so we hit cancel there. And then uh, you can also use this message box to um, help you debug if there's a problem. For instance, let's say you don't type out on the screen what this is, and you have some error code that number is it, the if then statement is not going off. So let's put the statement here. Show an example. Okay, so you're not getting a message um, that says hi, and you're wondering why not. Um, you could just go ahead and above that, 
message box the value to yourself. I cannot type on this keyboard. Okay. Um, you could also debug.print. Now, with debug.print, though, um, if your form is the whole window, you will not see the debug.print. It's going to show a little uh, text down here at the bottom um, during your program. But uh, most of the time I use message, message box because you need to see what's going on. Uh, you need to be messaged what it is. So if, if it's a full screen, you can't use this debug to print. Uh, you'd have to alt tab to see what your uh, Visual Basics window is displaying. Um, so we can, you could use that if you needed to. All right, one last thing. Um, as you're running through this code, you can also uh, have a break. And what a break is, is or a pause, you can go over here to the left of your code and click. And it's going to put a little circle and highlight your uh, line. Now what happens is when the code gets processed to this point, it's going to stop. And you can push the start button to continue. Um, this becomes very valuable in a lot of cases. Also, if you had a lot of code on here, and you're working in this section and you couldn't remember where you left off, um, you could highlight it by clicking here again. Um, you can't do this with the comments. It doesn't do anything, um, especially any other empty lines, but uh, you could do it for for if then or whatever else. Um, you want to make sure that you do have that highlighted. If you have another problem you can't figure out, there's a whole bunch of code you have to go through. And then um, forgetting what I was going to say here. <clears throat> Let's say, go ahead and show the example. We're going to have this go off and I'll go ahead and push this start. And I want to go to message box. There's a pause. Um, you could type some code here. However, I don't suggest messing around like that. Um, you could stop it or continue. Go ahead and continue. And it's supposed to continue. Oh, that's right. The message box high will not go off without the number being equal to negative five. Um, since it says equal to three, it's not going to go off um, for that if statement. So that's done for that. Um, I guess this will conclude uh, for my first tutorial. Uh, the last thing I just remembered, if you're at the bottom right here, you can see the number of lines and your, your um, column right here too. Um, but however, any notes are considered a line. So you could continue, and you can see the line just keeps going up. Um, there's some other stuff here. This becomes more and more advanced, though. Uh, we'll deal with that later. And here's the find, and um, you could do a copy and paste. Uh, copying is pretty simple, just selecting it. Right-click and go to copy. Um, there's also add watch. Um, a lot of different things here, but uh, there's another breakpoint. Just leave that at that. Uh, these do not save right here. If, if you do this and you quit and open your project again, it's not going to be there. Um, this is just for temporary on the screen. Anyways, that concludes for now. Until next time, I'll see you then.